my bishop. Yes, sir. Like I was saying, we've come to the another edition of the two shall make it free. Yes. And like I've been, I've been saying always, this show is dedicated to all the Israelites in the diaspora. Uh huh. And normally, what we do here is teaching it. It is different from the other program that they've been hosting here. Yes. And uh, this particular program is geared towards waking up the tribe, or the twelve tribes of the of the sons of Jacob. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. So that is our main purpose, and that is our main agenda to wake up our people, so that they might come to the knowledge of the truth of themselves. So that we must also live in righteousness, so that the kingdom that the, the Lord Jesus promised us, we shall take the kingdom by violence and we shall resettle the land. <laughs> hey, don't say that too loud. People get nervous. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, greetings to all the saints over there in America and everybody who is hearing us now. Yes, yes, so, yes. Bishop, you are, well, you are welcome to the show. And I think uh, today's topic, we are going to deal with uh, the, in the wilderness. Yes. I had a question, Papani. I... I I spoke to a young man yesterday. You may have more information uh, regarding uh, Biafran. Do you know anything about that, Biafra? Biafra? Yeah, the Biafra, is it in Nigeria? Yes. And there's a lot, a lot of things went on there, the Biafra war. Yes. Yeah. They were, I spoke to the young man yesterday. He told me that the uh, Biafra being persecuted in Nigeria because they are Israelites. Uh, he said that their leader named Namdi, uh, uh, what's his last name? Do you know his last name? Uh, uh, I don't know. Namdi Kanu was arrested in 2015 um, and that he was imprisoned uh, unlawfully, unjustly, and the government will not release him. So he asked me to mention it and inquire of it. So I, 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 I said, well, I'll speak to Papani. I said he may have more insight on it than me. Uh, so I've been, re you know, doing a little reading on it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So, so uh, like you were saying, the Biafra people, you know, and a lot of the Nigerians, especially the Igbo people, I don't know you know of the Igbo people. Yes. Yeah, the Igbo people, now that is a, another corruption of the uh, the word Hebrew or Igbo. Yes. Or the, that is a derivative. Mm, okay. Yeah. And, uh, you know, a lot of uh, the a lot of the, uh, the Ghanaians. I come I come from the tribe of Ghan. Uh -huh. We we live in Accra and we migrated from Nigeria. Okay. And we do a lot of customs and the, and the festivals similar to the Passover. Mm. Okay. The of so you know, what the information that the brother gave you is very precise. Okay. Okay. All praises. All praises. So today we're going to talk about the wilderness, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that is a topic that churches really don't speak too much about or even know about. So all the listeners, uh, get your Bibles, pens, and notebooks. Uh, we're going to begin in the New Testament with 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Okay. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Yes, and verse 1. Uh, did you want me to read, Papani, or did you want to read? Yeah, okay, I, I will read. The, uh, the only thing is that I will be a bit slow because I have to. I, I take notes down while I'm okay. <laughs> No problem. So Good. I think the listeners they will, they will, they will bear me uh, some seconds. Yes. <laughs> because when it comes to teaching, I don't joke with teaching because I take every everything down. Right. 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 Hey, let me ask you a question. Um, what what is the name in, that you brothers call the Most High in Christ in your language? Tree. Uh, we, you see, we have we have the we have the various titles. Uh -huh. In the in the God in the God tribe, we say Atana Nyongo. Okay. Now the tree people they say Ochoribiampo. Mm -hmm. okay. Now the Ewes the Ewe people also have how they call it. Now the Ewe people say they, they also call him uh, Mawu. Mm -hmm. That is the Creator God. Mm -hmm. So when these people came to West Africa, example, they said, okay, you people, you claim to be religious, but where is your holy book? Uh -huh. And we told them that everything is being written in our heart. Uh -huh. So that is what we told them, because I did uh, uh, this thing in school, uh, we call it uh, uh, 
African traditional religion. And you know, these scholars who came from West Africa, they tried to come in with a whole lot of things because these people knew we are the, the, the remnants of, 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 the, of the Israelites. Mm, but right. When they came there, they hijacked the educational institutions and they replaced a lot of things. Right, right. So they try to sometimes play play on our intelligence. Mm. But we know God before they came. Good, good. Hey, real quick, let's go to uh, Zephaniah. Because this argument keeps coming up from these foolish Israelites in America that in order to be saved, you must speak Hebrew. And I keep saying, that is not in the Bible. I'm like, what scripture says you have to learn Hebrew for salvation? I've never read it. That's it, that's it, that's it. Um, Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 8 and 9. I'd like to stop there. Okay. Because the scriptures say Israel was scattered in all nations, tongues, things of that nature. So yeah. we all speak various languages and have different customs that we have to come back to the Bible. Yeah. In verse 8 and 9. Verse 8 and 9. Okay. Therefore wait ye upon me, says the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the priest. For my determination is to gather the nations that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them my indignation. Even all my fierce anger for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. Now, my question is, as I always ask, has God gathered the nations to pour upon, their, upon them his fierce wrath yet? Has he done it yet? He has never done it yet because as I can see, the peace is... Still yes, yes. Now watch the next verse. Now, the best, next verse, that verse 9. For then I will turn to the people a pure language that they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. So after he destroys the beast and the nations, he's going to return to us all the pure language. So that we remember in Genesis uh, chapter 11, it said the whole earth. Was of one language? Yeah. The Lord is going to do that again. Yeah. Okay? So right now, he has not done that. We all do not have the pure language yet. Even, yeah. even Hebrew is a corrupt language today. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. It, yeah. It, is, it, is, it is mixed with Yiddish. Right. Exactly. And they put uh, Eliezer ben Yehuda corrupted it. He introduced German dialect, Arabic dialect, Russian dialect into the ancient Hebrew, what he did. So my point was this. Uh, when we learned the name here in America, we learned his name in the Hebrew as Yahweh. In the English, we say Jehovah. But now you got brothers rising up, fighting each other about what is the true name? What is the pure name? And I'm telling these people, stop fighting about that. He will give it to us all when he returns. Stop fighting. They cannot understand, Papani. What is wrong? Yeah, and, and uh, uh, Bishop, can I give you another trick? Yes. You see, you see uh, when uh, uh, when the Israelites, when the Assyrians conquered uh, the northern Israel, and when people migrated, those people who escaped the sword, they came to uh, Africa, mm -hmm. like from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. Now, when they, when they came, they were still doing the mosaic worship. Mm -hmm. Now, when they put the libation, they, they say something. He said, nah, eh, nah. They say, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because there was no letter J during those times. So the yeah means ja. Mm -hmm. These are some of the attributes. Yes, yes. So the ja, what they say, ja, ja in English. We have it even in the account language and in the Ga language. Uh -huh. They say, yeah. So when the priest, when they put the libation, even during the, uh, the Independence Day uh -huh. of Ghana, they invite the traditional people, they, they dress in white apparel with a, a hat and a, a fringes on it. And they put the libation. They still do the mosaic worship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Oh, they, nah, eh, nah. they were the priests of the night. Uh -huh. When we came from Je Jerusalem, they settled a long time in Ethiopia and Egypt. Uh -huh. And they settled along the night. So okay. we call them the priests of the night. 
So okay. it's called a nine wulo. Nine wulo, you said nine wulo. Nine wulo. Nine wulo. Wulo, like the Levites. Okay. Yeah, that is the meaning. They were the Levites. Uh -huh. They were the only people who can enter the holy of holies. They are the only people who can do the services mm -hmm. of the pouring of the libation. Okay. So the, the you know the custom is still there, but it has a, a bit been corrupted uh -huh. by, by you know a lot of things. Right, right. So in America, and I, I hope it doesn't reach out to Belgium, some people pronounce the name Yahweh. Some people pronounce it Yahweh. Some say Yah. Some say Jehovah. But everybody here in America is fighting each other. I'm talking about these young, stupid black guys in America. Like gang wars. Gang. One gang says Yahweh. Another gang says Yahweh. Another gang says uh, Yuhei Wavhei. Another gang says Ahaya, Ashaya, Ahaya. Everybody fighting. And it's like, I'm, I'm sitting back listening, saying this is the most ridiculous fighting I've ever heard in my life. We're all trying to get to the kingdom, but you fools, you idiots are fighting each other. I mean, almost to the point of physical violence, Papa Nee. Uh, and sometimes even Bishop, he said, even my name is what? The word of God. Yes, exactly, exactly. So even if we are fighting over the name, we should, we should fight over the righteousness, which exactly. is still written in, in the book rather exactly. than over the name. Exactly, exactly. So yeah, so it's just was it's really annoying. I'm like, oh god, they're like Bloods and Crips out here. <laughs> oh man. So okay, we're gonna go to First Corinthians chapter ten regarding the wilderness. Okay. Okay. So the Apostle Paul was preparing us for something to come uh, in the book of Corinthians. Now, as your listeners may know, Corinth is located in Greece, okay? And modern-day Christianity teaches us that the Corinthians were Greek white people. So, but we, as we read, we're going to find out who they are. Okay, 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 okay. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 10, uh, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I will not... I will not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized to Moses in the cloud and in the sea. So let's pause there. Okay. Notice it says, Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses. He's speaking to the Corinthians. This is proving to us who the Corinthians are. Yeah. The Corinthians could not have been Caucasian Greek white people because Caucasian Greek white people were not with Moses. The Corinthians were with Moses. That's what he's saying. All our fathers were under the cloud and were all baptized unto Moses. Proving the Corinthians are Israelites. You see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly what the what chapter is saying. Exactly. So let's read on. Okay, verse 3. And did all eat the same spiritual meat? Now, verse 4. And did all drink the same spiritual drink? For they drank. They drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. So Paul is revealing that Christ was the one dealing with Moses and the Israelites all that time. Okay. Now, what I forgot to mention is in verse 3, notice it says, and we're all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. So people glorify water baptism, right? They say, oh, you got to get water baptized. But did Moses dip anybody in the water? You don't read about Moses dipping millions of Israelites one by one in the water. But he did baptize them with the word of God in their spirit. He taught them. You understand? That's the baptism Moses did, okay? So, verse 4 proved that Christ was the one dealing with us in the wilderness, okay? And watch this. When we go to Acts 7, I want you listeners to watch this. When you go to Acts chapter 7 uh, and verse 30, verse 30. Yes, uh, okay. 
chapter 7, verse 10. And when 40 years were expired, there appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai an angel of the Lord in a flame of fire in a bush. When Moses saw it, he wondered at the sight, and as he drew near to he drew near to behold it, the voice of the Lord came unto him. Go ahead. Yeah. Read again. Um, continue. Yes. 32. Saying, I am God, I am the God of the fathers, the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Then Moses trembled and dust not behold. So now, when we go back to 1 Corinthians, and verse 4 again, read that again, 1 Corinthians 10 verse 4, it's something okay. heavy, because yeah, notice yeah. in Acts he said, the angel of the Lord, meaning the messenger of the Lord was in the bush. Corinthians chapter 10 uh, verse 4 and did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ you see that yeah so just what the listeners Christ has been the one dealing with us all this time um I'm gonna give you some more proof people might get nervous but I'm gonna help you out I'm gonna help them out uh bear with me a second uh, 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 hey, let me ask you. Here's the next question, Papini, I got for you. Yeah. In your language, yeah. Christ, how do you say his name in your language? Uh, we, 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 we call him uh, uh, Yesu. Yesu. Right, Yesu when I was in Ghana. Like, like Yeshua. Yes, when I was in Ghana, I heard the name Yesu. Okay. Yes, yes. Now, listen to this. In America, more with the dumb black Americans over here. They're fighting over uh, Yahweh Shai. What other names do they have? Uh, Yehoshua. Uh -huh. Yahshua. What other names do they call him? And, uh, and I'm, I'm a Shia. Sometimes I'm yes. a Shia. Right. And I mean fighting, fighting. So uh, in Isaiah, I just got to show it. It's just been on my mind. Look at Isaiah 28 and verse... Mm. That, that, yeah, in the foreign list, I'm going to speak to my people. Yes, yes, yes. Verse 11. Yes. Yeah, Isaiah 28, uh, verse 11. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to his people. You see that? So uh, that's prophetic that the Israelites would be scattered into all nations and learn different languages, speak different languages. So we have to speak and teach our people in the language they are that they know. Okay. So right now, like my uh, native language here is English. The majority of the people speak English, a form of English. So I speak to them in English. Why do I need to learn Hebrew to teach you a form of Hebrew that you do not understand? It, it, it doesn't make sense. There, exactly. The whole, the whole the whole course in Acts chapter two. Yes. That is another another example. Exactly. You, you speak to someone in a language that the person does not understand it. It doesn't make sense. Exactly. Exactly. See how you can understand it? Why can't our people here in America get it? Some of our people, I don't know if they're using drugs over here. I don't know what's wrong with them. No, no, they're oppressing. They're oppressing. People are saying <laughs> they're oppressing people in their mind. <laughs> so when we go back to 1 Corinthians 10 now. Yeah. And we're at verse 5. Yeah, first Corinthians 10. Let me read from verse 4 to 5. Verse 4. And did all drink the same spiritual drink? For they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Now, verse 5. But with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Okay. Then 6. Now, these things were our examples to the intent we should not last. After evil things, as they also lasted. So Paul is letting us know the things that occurred in the wilderness were meant for an example for us today. Yeah. And not only today, as we read down, Paul is going to reveal a mystery of something 
future tense that is for to come. Still read? Yes. Now, verse 6. Says, now, these things were our examples to the intent we should not just last evil things as they also last. 7. Neither be ye idolaters, as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to cut, to eat and drink, and rose up to play. So he want, one of the first things he warns us about is idolatry. Yeah. This is us worshiping uh, foreign gods. Okay. For example, you have the uh, Islamic god, uh, the black Kaaba stone. You have the white image of Jesus that is worldwide. Uh, those are two of the largest religions. Uh, followed by Buddhist, Buddhism, and followed by many other variations of various uh, foreign gods that our people have gone into. So he warns us as an example that our forefathers did that same sin in the wilderness. Go ahead. Uh, verse 7. Neither be ye idolaters, as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Eight. Now that let us commit for fornication, as some of them committed, and fell in one day, three and twenty thousand. Now many people don't understand what fornication is. Okay, let me give an example of fornication. When you go to First Corinthians five, and verse one, he gives an example of fornication. First Corinthians. Yeah. Hello, yeah, this is your first Corinthians. Five. Uh, five verse one, yes. First Corinthians five verse one. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as is not so much as name among the Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife. So having sex with your stepmother, your father's wife, is fornication. You see that? Yeah. Uh, so those type of sins, having sex with your father's wife, is like your stepmother. It is recorded in Leviticus chapter 18 of all the incestuous uh, sexual um, errors that our people fell into. Um, watch this. Go to the next chapter, 1 Corinthians 6. And verse 15 to 18. 15 to 18. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 15 to 18. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. So he's talking about dealing with prostitutes. Women, having sex with women who is not your wife. Go ahead. <laughs> Uh, uh, 16. Quote, Know ye know that ye which is joined to an hallowed is one body. For two, says he, shall be one flesh. Now, 17. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. 18. Go ahead. Okay, 18. Flee fornication. You see that? Yeah. He's telling you what it is. It says flee fornication is a period. He's letting you know dealing with a harlot is another form of fornication. Having sex with a woman who is not your wife is fornication. You see that? Yeah. And many of us, even to this day, many of our brothers are dealing with women that they know is not their wife, but they're having sexual relations with them. That is fornication. Okay, so in the New Testament, I just wanted to show you in the New Testament that they gave you two types of fornication. One, they, uh, dealing with your stepmother and another dealing with a prostitute or a, any woman that is not your wife is fornication. Okay, now there's many other forms of fornication to sum it up is sexual immorality. Homosexuality falls under that also. Bestiality falls under that. Uh, having sex with your children or a child falls under that as well. That's what Leviticus 18th chapter deals with all the forms of fornication. That's Leviticus chapter 18. It is a very good in-depth chapter that deals with fornication. Those are all the sexual sins. Okay. 
So when we go back now to 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 10 again, let's go back there to chapter 10. We, First Corinthians chapter 10. And verse 8 verse, again. Verse 8. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and fell in one day. Three and uh, twenty thousand. So God killed them. That's what happened. He killed them. Go ahead. Yeah. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted, and were destroyed of serpents. That's when the Lord sent those poisonous snakes to bite and kill the Israelites. And he told Moses to make a serpent of brass, hold it up to the Israelites, that whosoever of the Israelites would look upon the brass servant should be healed. That is the same thing Christ quoted in John chapter 3, when it says, uh, even as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. He's talking about the same thing. You familiar with it? Are you sure you're familiar with it? Yeah, yeah. I understand it. In the book of Numbers. Yes. Go to John 3 for your listeners, just in case. Just in case someone's confused. John 3, 14. Because in num it's in Numbers 21, verse 9 down, where's the actual occurrence. But let's read what Christ said about it here in, in John 3, 14 to 16. Okay, John 3, 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. So he's comparing him being lifted up to the same way Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. That whosoever of the Israelites believed would be healed. So Christ is letting Nicodemus know the same thing Moses was done during his time is happening during this time of Nicodemus. Go ahead. Okay. 15. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So the whosoever, when you go back to Moses, it was not all nations, all races. It was of the Israelites. Whosoever of the Israelites. Go ahead. Sissy, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Those three verses are all going together. So the world that he's making reference to is the world of Israel, okay? Because the word world means a group of people or a society of people having common goals, interests, and aims. That's another definition of the word world. Many times we only like the one definition of the planet Earth, but this is not talking about the planet Earth. This is talking about the world of the Israelites. For example, you have... The world of Chi of the Chinese. That's a total different world over there. You have the world of Rome. That was another different world. You have the sports world. The animal world. Yeah. Meaning cultural worlds. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they're within the cultural context, you know? Yes, exactly. Sometimes I do, I do also tell my people that when you are reading, when the word is in isolation, it has a different meaning. But when it, it, it appears in a context, that is another, also another meaning. Yes. So sometimes the cultural context is the most important thing. Yes, yes. So when we go back to 1 Corinthians 10 verse 9 again, let's go back there again. So we went there because of the serpents, the okay. fiery serpents. That's why we went there, to show you the context. Go ahead. Yeah. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 9. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted, and were destroyed of serpents. Neither mama ye. As some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. You know what it is to murmur, to speak yeah. evil. Uh, help me out here. Help me out. What is murmur? Yeah. To, yes, to murmur, yes, to speak evil, but you, you say it secretly. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, go like someone in the form of backbiting. Yes, you know? exactly. So many, many of the Israelites were speaking evil against the servants of God, against Moses and Aaron. Because Moses and Aaron were set up to help lead the people. So you had men like Dathan, Korah, and On, who, had, who, who rallied Israelite princes against Moses. And God killed them, their wives, and children. It's hard, terrible history. But it's, it's, Paul said this was written for us to learn from, not to murmur. Okay, go ahead. Neither mama ye, as some of them also mammoth. And were destroyed of the destroyer. Now, 11. Now, all these things happen unto them for examples, 
and they were written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Now that's the part we wanted to get to right there. So people ask also, what were they murmuring against? When Moses gave the law, the people were murmuring against the laws. And Moses was, they were attacking Moses. I'm going to give you an example today, Papa Nee. We bring out the laws of the Most High, explaining men should not dress like women, women should not dress like men. And we have people murmur. Oh, you guys are making things up. Who do you think you are? Listen, you're murmuring against God's laws. You're not murmuring against me, okay? The law says, um deals with marriage. When you have sex with women who is a woman that is not your wife, that is fornication. You will be judged. They murmur. Oh, you guys are oppressing. No, we're not oppressing. We're trying to liberate you, set you free from the spiritual bondage and physical bondage that we are in. The lifting of the oppression will begin spiritual first. Then it will begin to become physical. The liberation, the deliverance, the redemption. You understand? Yeah. That is the order that's going to occur. But God wants us to conform our spirits to his laws. Okay? So now, notice what he says in verse 11. Now all these things happen unto them for example, meaning examples. And they are written for our, our admonition. The word admonition means correction. For our correction upon whom the ends of the world are come. The end of the world from that time until now, we have come to the point of the ends of the world. Now, watch this, Papani. This is going to be heavy. Go to Ezekiel chapter 20. And we're going to start at verse 33. Ezekiel 20, uh, verse 33. Uh, okay. Ezekiel 20, 33. As I live, says the Lord God, surely with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury, with fury poured out, will I rule over you? Oh, you know what's happy about that? Many people think that when the Lord whom everyone calls Christ returns, he's going to be this um, mealy mouth, soft spoken, I love everybody, God. No, that's a falsehood. The Bible says he will rule over us with fury poured out and he will rule over us. You see this? He's not coming back for hugs and kisses, Papa Nee. He says, I'm coming back in fury. This is what Christianity has not taught the people. And they refuse to teach the people this. The Lord is coming back with fury. And he said, I will rule over you. The you is the Israelites. Watch this. Read on. Uh, then, uh, verse 34. And I will bring you out from the people. And will gather you out of the countries wherein ye are scattered. With a mighty hand, with a stretched out arm, and with fury poured out. Now that right there, that is what the church calls the rapture, okay? The Lord is going to bring the scattered Israelites out of all the countries wherein we are scattered, okay? The lands that we are in, where we are oppressed, we are not going to, we are not brought to these lands to, um, what's the word? To, hmm. To, to, like, like a feast. Right, to be here for, um, let me get the right word. We're not here to be, um, tag on, to live forever and to be dominant and, and, and all loving here. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, we were yeah. brought here to suffer so that we can learn to repent. This is what I was explaining to the brother uh, yesterday from Biafra. Because they want Nigeria as the motherland. I said, brother, Nigeria is not the motherland. Jerusalem, the land of Israel, that is the motherland and is larger than it appears on the map. Okay? I said, we were brought to these lands to pay for our sins so that we could re repent and then be delivered. Like, for example, Donald Trump, United States of America, just dropped 
a bomb on Afghanistan. You remember the name of the bomb? No, the Afghanistan bomb, the, I don't know the name. The name is Moab. Uh, oh, you see? Yes. Mo they said, watch this. They said it was going to be to, for China, but they used it in Afghanistan. So I said, oh, it was going to be used for China. So that lets you know they know who Moab is. Moab is the ancient name of China, of the Chinese people, okay? So they said they use it instead on Afghanistan to destroy the tunnels that ISIS has digged underground. So they also used to, to pierce the, 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 the tarmac. Yes. So that, so that the jets cannot take off. Exactly. So watch this. So these wars will escalate and escalate. It's not going to stop. So I'm letting brothers and sisters know wars and rumors of wars will escalate until World War III and then will Messiah return. That's why he says in verse 34, and I will bring you out from the people and will gather you out of the countries wherein you are scattered. So this is what I want everyone to see. The rapture is going to be for the Israelites and it's not going to, listen, listen, everyone listen. 1948 was a scam when the League of Nations set the white man in Israel as the Israelis, as the Jewish people. That is not what the scriptures prophesy for us. And I, it says, and I will bring you out from the people and will gather you out of the countries wherein ye are scattered with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out. Watch this, Papa Nee. This is the same thing Christ said. Let's go to, Ma we're coming back. Let's go to Matthew 24. Here's the precept. Matthew 24, verse 29 to 31. Yeah, Matthew 24. Matthew 24. And 29. And 29. Matthew 24, 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened, shall the sun be darkened, and the, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. So it's talking about war. When it says the stars shall fall from heaven, it's referring to the satellites they have around the earth. Because if actual stars hit the earth, the earth would blow up. So it's talking about the hardware that America, Russia, China, Japan has throughout the global atmosphere around the earth. Those are the stars that will fall from heaven. Let's read on. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth moon. That's us. Yeah. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Here it comes. Yeah. Read. Third one. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trump. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. You see that? That's what we just read in Ezekiel 20. So we're not going to be delivered on boats and planes. The Lord said, I'm going to send my angels. That's why this deliverance will be the greatest deliverance that earth has ever seen. Okay? It's going to be greater than from the time of Moses. So when we go back to Ezekiel chapter 20 again and verse 34. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 20. Verse 34, right? Yes. 34. And I will bring you out from the people and will gather you out of the countries where ye are scattered with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out. So you see it's saying the same thing in Matthew 24, saying the same yeah. thing. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, 35. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people. And there will I plead with you face to face. Now that's the part right there. So when we are delivered, Papani, the prophecy is he's going to take us back to the wilderness. 
This is why Paul was saying these things were written for an example to all of us. Okay, when the Lord brought us into the wilderness under Moses, Paul was, was warning us it's going to happen again. And notice it says, I will plead with them face to face. Watch this. Holus, let's go to 1 Corinthians 13. Watch this. Watch this. 1 Corinthians 13. Yes. Then, verse 12. Uh, verse 12. Hello? Yes, verse 12. Yes. Verse 12. Okay. Yeah, 1 Corinthians verse 12. 13 verse 12. Chapter 13, sorry. Chapter 13 verse 12. For now we see through a glass, darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. So you see that? For now we see through a glass darkly. The glass is really talking about the Bible, okay? We have the understanding dimly, okay? But notice it says, but then face to face. That's what we just read, Papani, in Ezekiel 20. So Paul is saying, reminding us, that's why I tell people, the Apostle Paul, everything he said was based on the Old Testament scriptures. So you cannot throw away the Old Testament. You need it to give you further in-depth understanding to what Paul is saying and talking about. The, you know, Bishop, you know, then, you know something, then this, uh, uh, we keep on calling this Old Testament thing, that is what is causing the problem. Yes. Because we have to say the instruction of Moses. Because I was in a discussion with a, a Christian brother. We were discussing about tithe. Mm -hmm. And the moment I, uh, I I gave a I gave a quotation in in, in Deuteronomy, he said, "Oh, well, this, this what we are saying is uh, is Old Testament. That is what we <laughs> Right. You, you you understand? Yes. So yes. The, 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 the mindset. And, and, the, and the naming of, 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 of this thing is also actually causing problem. Mm, mm, because mm. I, was, I, was, I was by then also falling into that trap. Mm. I don't want even to read even the Old Testament. Mm. And sometimes there's a brother who says, if you want to know the Bible, you even just concentrate on uh, what Christ said. So even in the New Testament, the typings in the red, they just read all the typings in red. Yes, that yes. comes out from the mouth of Christ. Right, right. And we read all these things with confusion. Yes. Without understanding. So, as we just proved, like the little bit we read in Corinthians about face to face, if you, if you just read the New Testament, the New Testament is an abbreviated summary of the Old Testament prophecies. Okay? Like we just read, for example, uh, 1 Corinthians, we read 13 and 12. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. If you ask people, what does it mean then face to face? They will not be able to accurately explain to you what Paul is making reference to. If you ask the people what we read earlier today in 1 Corinthians 10 about the wilderness being written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world have come, they could not explain to you that we will return to the wilderness as Ezekiel 20 is explaining in further detail. You need both testaments to get a better understanding of what is to come. This is what our people do not understand because they've been following white man lies. Okay. So let's go back to Ezekiel 20, Papa Nee. Yeah, Ezekiel 20. Verse 35. 35. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people. And there will I plead with you face to face. 36. Like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so will I plead with you. Say as the Lord God. Hey, that's why Paul said, I'm giving you warning. Remember our forefathers with Moses. So many times people don't understand why is Paul reminding us of Moses? Because we're going back to the wilderness again. And Christ will deal, plead with us face to face. Everything we see darkly and don't really have the full understanding, 
Christ is going to give it to us. Not only is he going to give us the pure language again, he's going to give us the history all over again in totality. Okay? Like you read about in the New Old Testament, the book of Jasher, or you'll read about the book of Enoch, and we get we don't really understand those things. The Lord says, I'm going to give it all to you. Don't worry. That's what he's saying. That's plead with us face to face. Watch that. So we're going back to the wilderness of e uh, as we came out of Egypt again. That's what Ezekiel is revealing to us here. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, 36. Like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so will I plead with you, says the Lord, says the Lord God. 37. And I will cause you to pass under the rod. And I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. So the covenant, we're going to be brought back to the covenant, which is what we call now the new covenant under Christ. Okay. Right now, Papa Nee, we are under grace right now. When we are brought under the bond of the covenant under Christ, playtime is over. It's no more all grace. Grace is finished. It's over. That's why he said, I will rule over you. I will, and you and cause you to pass under the rod of the covenant. And watch the next verse. Okay. Uh, 38. And I will peck out. I will peck out from among you the rebels. And them that transgress against me. I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn. And they shall not enter into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I mean, look at this, Papani. Amongst us, he says, I will purge out from among you the rebels. Just like under Moses, you had rebellions under Moses. It's going to happen again. This is what Ezekiel is saying. I will purge out from among you the rebels. Because when Christ gives us the law, you're going to have certain men, certain women murmur and say, oh, let's go back to Babylon. Let's go. Remember they said they wanted to go back to Egypt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to have the same spirit. Yeah. Yes, yes, it's going they to happen. Egypt. Yes, they loved it. Just like many of our people love Babylon. You're going to have certain spirit. Oh, we should go back. Oh, remember McDonald's? Remember Burger King? Remember the Coke and the Pepsi? <laughs> So you're going to have those spirits again. So it says, 38, And I will purge out from among you the rebels and them that transgress against me. Because Christ is going to give us the law again. And it's no more grace, Papa nee. No more, we can't say, oh, my boss made me do this. There's going to be no, Christ will be the boss. So we will have no excuse for nothing. Watch this. And I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn. So our people that are in Ghana, America, Belgium, India, wherever we are, Papani, he said, I'm going to bring you out from there, okay, and bring you to the wilderness. Then it says, uh, and from, uh, and I'll bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn, and they shall not enter into the land of Israel. Because from the wilderness, when we were with Moses, remember Moses died, and Joshua led us into the, into the land of promise, the promise. It's going to happen so again under Christ. But before we get to the land, he's going to do a lot of killing amongst us. Because some of us ain't right. Some of us are so rebellious. Okay? And you shall know that I am the Lord. You see that, Papa Nee? Yeah. This is yeah, heavy. Yeah, 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 yeah. You see, like, uh, it was, is it in the book of uh, Acts? So they, they rebel against the Holy Spirit. Yes. Isaiah also said the same thing. Exactly, exactly. So... Paul in 1 Corinthians 10, he did not write that for no reason. He understood we're going back again. That's what he was teaching us and trying to warn us about. Okay? That's why he said, upon whom the ends of the world have come. He said, even us, upon whom the ends of the world have come. So us living, we are going back, Papa Nee. Okay? And remember he said, the dead in Christ shall rise first. So even those of us who die in this truth... He, we're going to be resurrected first and we're going to be taken to the wilderness with Christ and the other Israelites. That's it. This is people who are alive also are going in the, in the twinkle of an eye, they are going to change. Yes, 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 exactly. So this is what I warn our brothers and sisters about. Don't get comfortable in the lands where we sojourn. Our people in Nigeria, you're sojourning there. That is not the land the Lord is going to bring us to. That is not the motherland. 
So our people really have to get their minds right, okay? These lands, like our people here in America, we our people love Babylon. There's no, that's why they call it Babylon the Great. This country is the greatest and most powerful country on earth, but it is the most wicked, okay? And we have to understand we're going to return to the motherland, and the capital of the earth will be Jerusalem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in Isaiah chapter 2, you know, uh, I read something also there that all the laws that our forefathers failed to observe, Christ is going to give us the same law. Yes. But this time with iron hands. Yes. So from Mount Zion shall come forth the law. Yes, Isaiah 2. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I love that chapter. I love that's a beautiful chapter and it's heavy. Okay. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, this is mystery. You know, this is mystery. And sometimes, you know, uh, well, you know, the, we, we, tend, we tend to the miracles that is happening in the church today. Mm -hmm. And a, a teachings like this, an in-depth teaching like this is nowhere to be found. Right. And sometimes, you know, we feel comfortable with the situation and we don't want to deal with with the real things, and sometimes we just play around. Yes. And we play games. Yep. And sing songs. Yeah. <laughs> that is what we do, so that we don't have to deal with the realness of the Bible. But we, if we want salvation, Papa New, we have to deal with the reality of the Bible. The Bible's a real book, okay? Our people were scattered in slavery. Oh, you know what I wanted to read? I wanted to show you this book I got. Can you see the title, Papa New? Jewish diaspora. That is the Jewish diaspora. Yes. Watch this. I just got it. And on pay is volume two. Watch what these devils, because the white man's a devil. Watch what they say. Uh, I'm on page 454. It says migrations into sub-Sahara African Africa. In later centuries, Jews are believed to have settled in Western Africa. During the height of the Songhai, Mali, Ghana, and Kanem Bornu empires, according to accounts from explorers of the region, several powerful Jewish families of the Songhai Empire were of Jewish origin. Until Askia Muhammad came to power and in 1492 decreed that all Jews either convert to Islam or leave the region. So the white man knows that our people along the western coast of Africa are the Israelites, are the Jews the Bible speaks of. You see? Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's, a very, it's a very powerful, it's a very powerful expression over there. Very, very powerful and very, very informative. Yes. So our people will, they'll see this in the bookstore, but will not buy it because you got the white man on the cover and it says Jewish diaspora. So we think, oh, they're not going to talk about nothing with us. So we cast it aside. But in their books, they always put our truth in it then later on in the book, it goes into their lies. Yeah. Now, uh, you know that he, uh, they, they mentioned Bono. Bono. Yes. What you just read. Yes. They mentioned Bono. Now, in Ghana, we have the Bono State. You know, the tree, the Ashantis and the this and the Akans. Uh-huh. You know, the, the, you know the, the, there's a similarities in the, in, the, in, the, in the language. Yes. But we have, uh, we have clans. We have the Ashantis. We have the Fantis. Mm-hmm. And we have the Bono mm -hmm. also. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. So get this book if you can. Try yeah, yeah, have, yeah, get yeah. that book. It's Encyclopedia of the Jewish Diaspora. It's written by Avram Elric. Av M. Avram Elric. Okay. It's volume okay. two. Volume two. Very good book. Uh, and remember, they always put lies into the end. So just be mindful of that. Because they try to say that they are the Jews. These white people say they're the ones that settled <laughs> throughout Africa later on. I had to laugh. I said, oh, my God. <laughs> you see, uh, uh, Bishop, sometimes, uh, sometimes when I, uh, I'm in a discussion with my people, I was trying to show somebody, and he was shocked. I said, yes, you have the internet there. You have the Google. You just Google uh, uh, 1747, uh, the Negro land map. Yes. And just Papa, it show up the kingdom of Judah or Wida. Yes. It is there. Now, Pope Nicholas V actually gave an edit, a Papa bull, and showed
So when then where they should actually go to go and and sleep? Mm. Because they know that we were there. Mm. I like that. Hey, where can I read that at? I want to write that down. Where's that at? You said Pope what? Pope Nicholas the fifth. He issued a, a papal bull. Yes, Pope Nicholas the fifth. Okay, I'm gonna Google it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he showed he showed them the specific places we were scattered to, so that they can go after us. Hmm. Yeah. That's very good info. Excellent yeah. information. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So every time, you know, uh, I'm very conscious of myself, the schemes and the, and the lies and everything. Every day, I have to deal with a lot of lies. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we are, dealing, we are dealing with the beast. Yes. We've been, we've been told that the beast is going to deceive the whole world. Yep. So this is not a joke. Exactly. Correct. Yes, 100% yeah, this, true. This is no joke. That's right. So thank you also very much for the very deep insight into this wilderness thing because... I'm also going to take this lesson very serious and, you know, it, it entails a lot of uh, details and it, it entails a lot of uh, spirituality also in it. It entails that, you know, we have to live in a very righteous way for, yes. for the second coming of Christ. So this is no joke. That's right. This is no joke. Yeah, this is no joke. I love it. I love it. All praises. Good, good, good. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a very good teaching. Yeah. So, uh, Bishop, you know, sometimes as you were speaking, we know in our mind that Old Testament, Old Testament, Old Testament. And, you know, we are under the dispensation of grace. Therefore, you know, uh, the grace is there. So why do I have to bother myself, keep my beers and all kinds, you know, even in your workplace, all kinds of intimidation. Yes. If you want to do this, you know, they say this. If you want to do this, they say this. So is the law, is there any law for us to abide or... Is, are we under the dispensation of grace? So, you know, everything everything goes. The When you read about grace, when we go to the book of Titus, yeah. Paul explains what grace is. Uh, Titus 2, verse 11 and 12 explains grace. Our people tend to use grace as an excuse not to do what the Bible says. But that is not what grace is. It's like when you owe the bank some money and you go, to, they take you to court. And they give you a grace period to pay the money back. You understand? The uh, grace doesn't mean you don't have to pay it. The grace means you have time to get the money that you owe. You understand? Uh, so now read Titus 2 verse 11 and 12. Titus 2 11 and 12. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. Teaching us that denying ungodliness. And worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. You see that? That's what grace teaches us. So in other words, grace teaches us to keep the commandments. Because that's what, deny, to, in order to deny ungodliness and worldly lust, that means you got to know the commandments. Okay? <laughs> in order to live soberly and righteously and godly, you got to know the commandments. So that's what grace teaches us, to do the commandments. Okay? So we have to learn them one by one. What are they? Let's learn them so that we can try to better our lives. Yeah. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very good teaching, and it is very, it is very, very deep. Like I, I've been saying, I have actually noted all the topics we've been doing, and at one point in time, we shall just take the topics and be going over. Yes. Because sometimes it's like uh, somebody is in a, in a primary school and you're trying to teach the person rocket science. Yes. Uh, yeah, you know, trying to trigonometry and a uh, uh, very complex mathematics, you know. Yes. At one point in time, he may be lost. Yeah, exactly. So sometimes, you know, I believe in repetition. Uh-huh, yes. Yeah, I believe in repetition. Sometimes I can flow with you in the frequency, but what about... Our sisters and brothers who did not actually receive higher education. Mm -hmm. Right. You're right. You're yeah, right. yeah, yeah, you know. Yes. There's a problem. Yes, yes, and you're right. Sometimes they don't understand the English, and sometimes they cannot read also in the local language Bible. Mm -hmm. Not all of them also can read. Uh -huh. And if they can read also, what is the understanding? Mm. Because the white man has also gone to, the, to some extent.
sense to actually inject lies. Yes, yes. So, you know, sometimes uh, I sleep and uh, I do have dreams about how, you know, the truth can get to the to the uh, to the uh, to the to the person with uh, I mean a low mind person. Hey, can and you translate these lessons into the local language? Yeah, 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 you know we have the Bible in the in the in our local language. So you can translate these classes into the lo local language. Local language, yeah. It's only that you give the quotation and they can read in the local language. Mm -hmm. So, but if they can't read Papani, they can still hear. Yeah. You understand? Can, yeah, they can hear. So you can speak tree fluent, right? Yeah, I can speak tree. So some of my programs, when I read the English, then I have to come down to explain it in simple terms in tree. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that's yeah. necessary. Very good. All praises. You're doing a good work, Papa. And all praises to the Most High. Uh, 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 good work too. <laughs> so, uh, 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 Bishop. Yes. You know when uh, the precepts are also too much. Mm. It will be too much for them. It will be very difficult for them to digest. Okay. So without uh, this thing, we are going to end the program. And, uh, you know, as I, as I said, I've actually noted all the topics that we've been doing. And bit by bit, we shall come back so that you, you do a repetition. Okay. That's good. Yeah. All praise. For that, for our people to get an understanding. Because for me, the understanding is the most important thing to me. Yes, yes. Good, good, Papani. All praises to the Most High. Thank you. All praises, yeah. <laughs> and also all praises to the saints over there. Yes, all now praises. I pray to God for Almighty to give them the power to uh, observe the commandments. Yes. That is the most important thing. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. And so uh, what uh, closing remarks do you have for our listeners for the show to end up? Okay. Hey, so remember, visit the website www.israelunite.org. And remember, the nation of Israel is big. We are scattered in all these nations. So, brothers and sisters, help us spread the gospel. Help us in your in your language. Our people in South Africa must hear it. Our, the, in fact, the entire world got to hear it because we're scattered practically everywhere. So, help us get this truth out. Help us. Help us with donations so that we can physically go to these places and spread the truth that our people who suffer from oppression colonialization and slavery can hear the gospel and be prepared for the second coming of Messiah. Thank you very much. And yes, Papa. Praise be to all the saints. Yes, Papa. And shalom. Shalom. Next, by this time, we ask God for the opportunity and the power and the anointing and the grace and the understanding so that we can actually communicate the truth yes. to our people. All praises. So, Thank you. Shalom and peace. All right. Shalom, Papa. Nee. All right. Yes. Shalom. All right. Shalom, Israel. I'm Elder Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this and join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.